Today we're going to continue on our journey with Clipper firmware by taking a look at two options you have for your user interface. Hello everyone, Chris here, and yes, today we're going to continue on with our Clipper firmware series. Now these videos are aimed at the new Clipper user, someone that has pretty much zero experience running this type of firmware. And in the first video, we did a quick install of Clipper alongside Octoprint. That's because Octoprint has always kind of been the traditional user interface to run Clipper. Now you don't necessarily need a UI to run Clipper firmware, but it does save you a lot of work on the command line. And there are two versions of user interface out now that have become very popular, and that being Mainsail and Fluid. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to run through these two options you have for user interface for Clipper. They are specifically designed to run Clipper. You don't need Octoprint at all. And the install is not going to be all that different from what we did in the original video with Octoprint, but there are a few things that change that you might need to know. Also, this might be a new interface for you. This might be the one that you want to go to permanently. So we'll check them both out just to see what the differences might be. So let's head to the computer, take a little further look at Mainsail and Fluid. So Mainsail and Fluid are going to be somewhat similar. They do it different ways, but they're going to offer the same set of features to ultimately control your 3D printer. In fact, they both kind of remind me of the Duet DWC, Duet Web Controller. They work pretty much the same way. They're going to give you remote access to Clipper and ultimately your 3D printer. It's important to note that there's a lot of information about both of these open source projects out here on the internet, and they are intended initially to run on a Raspberry Pi as an image. That's not saying you can't run them on other things. In fact, we're going to jump into that in later videos. But for this video, there will be a Raspberry Pi involved. Now, of the two, Mainsail and Fluid, Mainsail is actually a little bit easier to install, in my opinion, but that's only because Mainsail is currently available in the Raspberry Pi Imager tool. So that's where we're going to start. So the Raspberry Pi tool is what I've been using a lot lately for doing a lot of my different image installs. But from here, you can just do Choose OS, Other Specific Purpose OS's, 3D Printing, and there's one for Mainsail. And you can see there's a couple of pieces involved here, Clipper, Moonraker, and Mainsail. We'll choose our storage. Pretty much any SD card is going to work. The Raspberry Pi image tool should take care of that device. No need to format it. It'll handle all of that. And using this tool, you probably want to go ahead and set up a couple of things before you write it. You can do that in your settings right here. Since I only have one install of Mainsail, I'm just going to change the host name to the Raspberry Pi to Mainsail. This will allow us to access our Mainsail install from the URL bar, mainsail.local. We'll see that more in a moment. We do have to enable SSH because we are going to have to get in command line to set things up. Set your username and password. I usually just use the default with Pi as the user, password Raspberry, just so I can keep it straight. And then you need to configure your Wi-Fi. Just enter your network name and your password. Remember, those are case sensitive. And you can always set your location settings. I am in the central time zone. Down here, I usually just go with defaults, eject it when it's done, enable telemetry, doesn't really matter for this install, but you can just save it. And with those settings set, when you write your image, all of that's going to be set up for you. You don't have to edit any files manually. So let's go ahead and write. Remember, it is going to delete everything on that SD card that you're going to use. Now, while our main cell image is writing, we do have to go out and actually get a copy of Fluid so that we can write the image. It's not included in this tool yet, but it probably will be at some point. So we'll go to the Fluid site, and all the information you need to install it is here. You can just go to Installation, and we're going to use the Fluid Pi image. You can see they even have a Docker image for this. So you can install that on pretty much anything you wanted, but today we're focused on the Pi. So we'll go to Fluid Pi. You can click here to get the latest release. That's going to take you to GitHub. And we just need this Fluid Pi RPi Lite. You can just click on this file, and that'll start the download. Once your download's complete, you can just right-click, Extract All. This file is pretty good size, so be careful of that. 
But once this is extracted, then we'll have an image where we can use fluid as well. The mainsail image is almost done. We'll start with mainsail first. And since we baked all that information into our image with the settings tab, we can just mount our SD card on our Pi and power up and it should join our network. And once the boot up has completed, like I showed you when we created the image, you can just go to its .local address. Since we called it mainsail, we can go to mainsail.local. And mainsail is up and ready to go. Now you can see we have an error. That's because we don't have a main board connected to our Raspberry Pi and we don't have a printer.cfg. You're not going to get a printer configuration just by installing mainsail and you're not going to have Clipper be flashed to your main board. So we still have quite a bit of work to do. But as far as the dashboard goes, it's all here. You've got your dashboard, we'll see this more when we get connected up. You've got your console, you can talk to the main board via G-code or M-code commands. It's going to give you some print statistics, some history, and then you have machine settings. Notice there is no printer.cfg in here. We're going to have to build that ourselves. But I wanted to mention all these different types of software that come with this mainsail install. You can see there's an update manager. So it doesn't know anything about Clipper because there's no main board. You have your mainsail, which is the UI, what we're looking at here. And then you have something called Moonraker. You really don't need to worry about it so much, but it's what connects this thing together from mainsail over to Clipper. It's the web server piece, basically. So just know there's a couple of pieces of software at play here that all work together to make mainsail and Clipper work successfully together. And here's where I think some misconceptions come into this configuration. Mainsail and Fluid, they're a nicer version of user interface that you can use to control a 3D printer that's running Clipper. But you still have to get Clipper set up and you still have to have a printer config. So from the first video, when we installed Clipper, we flashed it onto the main board. All that still has to be done if you haven't done it yet. And yes, you do have to go to the CLI to do all of those functions. And here's our example hardware configuration. If you saw the last video, this is exactly the same setup I was using. I have our PSU, our Big Tree Tech Mini E3 1.2 board. It doesn't really matter what board you use. Most of them are going to work with Clipper. This is just the one that I grabbed. All the settings are going to be slightly different depending on the MCU that the board has. And I have a couple of 100K thermistors plugged into the board. This is absolutely bare bones what you would have to have to troubleshoot a Clipper config. Because if you don't have the thermistors or you don't have the power hooked up, Clipper is going to throw an error before it even gets started. So you can't even tell what's going on. As I've mentioned before, I think it's a lot easier to go ahead and build your printer, get everything plugged in and ready to go, and then start troubleshooting Clipper. That way, at least if Clipper's throwing errors, you know it's something you need to act on and not something you don't have. Now from the last video, this board does have Clipper on it, but I'm going to show you again that the process is the same no matter what UI you're using. So a secondary SD card is going to be handy so you don't have to unmount the one on your Raspberry Pi. Now since we're going to have to go to the command line to actually get a Clipper configuration file, a bin file to put on our board, before you do that, it's probably important to be on the newest versions of all these different softwares, Mainsail, Moonraker, and Clipper. So from your Mainsail interface, when you bring it up, go ahead and just update all of these. This will keep you from having to rework a configuration with newer syntax, or maybe they don't work the same as the old ones do. Just update all of this to the newest version. You can do that with this command right down here. It's going to go through a couple of things. It takes some time, but it's well worth your time to do this now rather than go to the CLI and have to come back and rework things. And now everything is up to date. The most important one here is Clipper because we're getting ready to flash it onto the board. We want it to be the newest version possible and work well with mainsail. If you have a problem with any of the updates using the update all button, just go and do them manually one by one over here. It takes a little longer, but it's not that big a deal. So now let's move to putty get in command line, and we'll build the firmware.bin. We're pretty much going to do the same exact thing as the previous video. This time, though, we can use that .local address, mainsail.local, that we set up when we created this image. And your user ID and password are going to be whatever you set them to be in that image. The default for Raspberry Pi is usually Pi and Raspberry. 
and here we are in mainsail. Now really the only thing that mainsail is going to save you command line wise is having to do the git to grab clipper and doing the initial install. If you do an ls right here in the home directory, you can already see all the stuff for Clipper is here, as well as all the supporting things for mainsail, like the streamer to use your camera, and storage for your G-code files. So you don't have to do that step, but we still do have to run a make on Clipper to configure the type of board we use and get our bin file. Most OS images nowadays on Linux are going to have make already, but you can go ahead and confirm that if you'd like. Do a sudo apt apt make install make and you need your root password which is also raspberry and makes already installed so that's confirmed and we're just going to change directory into clipper we saw that before the main clipper directory you can take a look in there if you want but really we just want to run a make menu config just like we did in the first video and it's all the same options that we saw previously. Since we've already done this, I'm just going to run through it really fast for our mini 1.2 board. So we're going to enable extra low level configuration options. We have to pick our chip type, which is an STM32. We want to confirm the model. Ours is an F103. Bootloader offset for this chip is 28K. Clock reference will stay at 8. We're going to use the USB interface. Again, you'd only need to change this if you were going to use GPIO. And the one that's tricky for most boards is the GPIO pins that are set at the start of that microcontroller. So we're going to go into this one. And for the mini 1.2 board, we do an exclamation point, PC13. It is a little different for each board. So make sure you have this set correctly. You can usually do a Google search and find out what these pins are going to be. And that's all we have to do. We do a Q to quit, hit yes to save it. Just hit our Y. Now we can just run a make command to compile. That's going to create our bin file. Clipper.bin has been created. Now to get that file, you could dismount the Raspberry Pi SD card, put it on your computer, put it on another card, whatever, and change it over. But WinSCP is the easiest to do, so you don't have to turn off your Pi and do all of that. We did it in the last video, but you just pull up WinSCP, create a new session. It is SCP, your host name, again, mainsail.local, and your username and password. We can log in. On the right, your files on your Raspberry Pi, the left, the ones on your desktop. So let's go into Clipper out and here is our clipper.bin we can right click download and I'm just gonna save it to my desktop then I'm gonna go back to my file explorer here's our clipper.bin we need to rename that to firmware.bin and then we'll just copy it to the SD card we're gonna to use to load the firmware onto our main board I'm just going to delete the ones I already had in here from the last video, and we'll paste in the new one right here. If you already have firmware on your board, you just want to try mainsail, you don't need to do this step, just make sure it's the same version as we just updated to. So now we can remove the SD card, load that SD card onto our main board, and then power up. It'll flash a few times when the firmware's been flashed, and then I usually just like to reset the whole thing, so power off and back on and then we'll be up on Clipper. Now that Clipper is running on our board, we can go ahead and cable up USB to our Raspberry Pi. And if you do an ls slash dev, you're gonna see serial. That is our main board. Now if you have a problem with the serial option coming up, go back, make sure your menu config, all those op options are correct, and also go ahead and reboot the Pi. Just do a sudo reboot. That might make it start working. If all else fails, unplug everything, reboot it, bring it back up, and that should fix the problem. But from here, this is going to get us our address of our board that we have to use in our printer config. So if you do ls slash dev slash serial slash by dash id, that'll get your MCU address. 
And again, what I like to do is just bring that command back up, up arrow. I'm just going to enter USB and hit tab. That's the whole address. That gets you the whole line that you need for your configuration file. And that's our next subject, the configuration file. So pretty much all of this is recap from the first video. Whether you use main sail, octoprint, or fluid, it's going to be pretty close to the same thing. You still have to create a printer.cfg file, and that can be a lot of work. But there are examples out here in main sail and fluid that you could use for your 3D printer, depending on what board you might have. As always, the internet is full of great examples that you can use to get you set up. So let's just walk through those steps really quickly. So now that we know our MCU ID, just go ahead and do an LS here again. We're in the Clipper directory. You can see there's a config directory. If you do an LS on config, there are a ton of example CFG files. You can pick one of these if you like, or you can pick one that you found on the internet. Again, Voron has a lot of great ones. They do have one for the generic E3V.2 that we're using here. So we can start with that if we'd like. Now, because we have to go in and out of the Linux file system to use these, there's a couple different ways you can do it. And these newer UIs like Mainsail and Fluid actually make it fairly easy. You can just do it from the user interface. So we don't have to do anything in here. So back to the browser, if you just go to Machine, you can select which directory you want to be in. Here's Config Examples. Your printer.cfg actually goes in Config. Again, we don't have one. But back to examples, you can pick any of these you wish. You can see how many files per page here. You can just scan through. Here's our 1.2 E3 config. You can open that up. And here's your configuration file. I think it's just as easy to do a control A, control C to select all and then copy. And then you can close this, go back to your config directory up here. And I'm just going to create a new file, create file, printer, Dot CFG. And I'm going to click on that file and paste in what I got out of that example. And here's where your MCU serial comes in. You need that device that we found over there in command line. So back to putty. Remember, we need this whole command here. We'll just select that. And then in our browser, we'll just paste it right here in our configuration. And the only thing I'm going to change in here is this is specific for a board for different thermistors. I have the same thermistor on my hot end, just a regular 100K. This is the most common option. We'll just copy that and we're going to paste it on the bed too because I know it's going to work and not throw as many errors as it would usually because we don't have anything plugged into this board. It's trying to keep you safe. So let's save and restart. After the restart over here, you can see our errors are gone. It can actually see what version of Clipper we're running on what MCU. The dashboard is a lot more populated. It's starting to read the thermistors. You can control the printer. It's throwing quite a few errors over here because we're missing things in the config. But that's going to be a lot of detailed information that we're going to have to add. And since this is a UI video, there's one thing I can tell you to do as far as mainsail and fluid. You need to include that specific config file in your printer.cfg. You can see right here it says mainsail.config. Please include this in printer.cfg. So if you go to machine, you can see that mainsail.cfg, it contains a lot of the devices that the dashboard's complaining about. If we just take a quick look at it. Virtual SD card, pause, resume, all these things that it's complaining about are right here. We just need to include it. So we can close this, go to our printer.cfg, and just up here at the top in brackets, do include mainsail.cfg, and just hit save and restart. After the restart, you can see we're talking again to the MCU. That's how you know we're communicating with Clipper. Go back to the dashboard. A lot of those ugly errors are already gone. So that is a great start. From here, you would work on your printer configuration, set up your motors, set up your steps, if you have a probe, all that good stuff that's going to be in a future video. So there's mainsail, it's set up, and you can start using it. 
Again, you have to set up that printer.cfg tailored towards your 3D printer. We'll do that a lot later. Now let's jump to fluid. It's not a lot different, so we're gonna go over it rather quickly, but it does look a little different, has a few different features. Now back to the beginning of the video when we downloaded fluid, we just download that as a zip file, you unpack it and there's an image file. Now, Fluid isn't necessarily in the Raspberry Pi imager tool, but you can still use it. You just have to use it as a custom image. So we'll use custom, and then we'll just navigate to downloads to our Fluid file, the .img. We'll open it up. Choose your storage. We're just going to use that same SD card that we did with main cell. We'll overwrite it. And all of the options that you have set in here are going to be valid with Fluid as well. I just changed .local to Fluid. F-L-U-I-D and an extra D for uh, extra duh, whatever. Uh, but then all these other things, Raspberry Pi, your, your passwords for SSH and your wireless, that's all going to be valid. So just save that and hit right. And again, now that we have Fluid installed on our SD card, we can just put it on our Pi, boot up, and then we can head over to the browser. And you can use that .local address, fluid.local. And here's Fluid. It has a lot of the same pieces that Mainsail does. It uses Moonraker as its web server. The layout's just a little bit different, but you can get almost all the same tasks done. And since we already have Clipper installed on our main board, we don't have to do it again. I'm gonna show you just because I want you to know that these are the same. So with Fluid, just like Mainsail or Octoprint, Clipper is at its base. So we're just gonna open up the PuTTY tool we're going to go to fluid.local and we're going to log in just like we did before. And here's fluid. Again, it's very similar. You can do an ls. There's your clipper file and all the supporting files. We can change directory into clipper. And to configure your firmware.bin file, you need to compile it with make menu config. And we set all the same things, depending on the board you have. STM32, 103, 28K bootloader, your startup pin, PC13. Q to exit, yes to save. Here I'm going to show you, if you need to recompile, you can always do a make clean. That's gonna clean up anything that might be already in there before you run your make. And now you can just do the make. Again, to generate your firmware.bin file. And when that's done, we use our WinSCP tool to grab that bin file. The file structure is the same, clipper out. And there's clipper.bin. We'll download it. We'll copy it and paste it on our SD card. Just like before, it will have to be named firmware.bin instead of clipper.bin. Then we can take our SD card, back to our board, mount it, you can restart the board, you can usually just use the switch, it'll pull that in. I usually like to reset it, power it off, power it on, just to make sure it's reset. But after that's been flashed, then you can cable your board up to your Raspberry Pi, USB. Clipper will be up and running. The board's connected to the Raspberry Pi, so now you can just do your ls slash dev. Serial is there. That's what we're looking for, because we need that ID. So ls slash dev slash serial slash by dash ID. There's our device. I just do USB tab to get the whole device name. You're gonna need that in your printer config, just like with the other two configs. Again, just like we did in Mainsail, it's probably a great idea to go ahead and do your updates before you create your firmware.bin file. Just to make sure it's on all the newest versions, you don't want to have to reflash it later if you don't have to. So in Fluid, to do that, you just come down here to the COG settings, and then you have some tabbed out options here. Go to Software Updates. And just anything that needs to be updated, go ahead and update it. We can do Fluid. We'll do Clipper and Moonraker. Now everything's up to date. And just like before, to make Clipper work, no matter what UI you're using, you need a printer.cfg file. 
but just like in mainsail, you can do it all from here and use an example config if you wish. Over to the side, go to configuration. Here's your file editor. In this one, you don't need to go up to the other directories to get it. You actually have a config examples over here. There's a lot of different ones. If you want to use the example, just get the one that's closest to the board that you're currently using. By the way, all of these usually have information about how to set up the board. So if you don't have the options to flash your firmware, come to the example configs. They might have all the information you need. For example, here's what to set the bootloader to and what your microcontroller startup pin is going to be. So just take that into account. But again, I'm just going to select all, control A, control C to copy it. And then over here, just create a new file, just like we did before. Add file, printer.cfg, open it up, and control V to paste everything in. Just like I told you with mainsail, Fluid also needs you to include their configuration file. So just do a bracket, include, Fluid, .cfg, close bracket. That's going to save you from a lot of errors when you first start up. And of course, we also do need our dev name, that USB name that we got from command line. So our MCU serial. So scroll down, MCU, back to putty, this whole line right here, config file, just overpaste this line. Now we can save and restart. And it looks like Moonraker has thrown a bunch of errors. Of course, I would expect some errors, but this looks to be something down in the OS that doesn't like something about how it was configured. We can head here to this doc to read more on it. It looks like the user needs to be granted no password. So it needs a little higher level of permission to do what it needs to do. It looks like you can just install a policy kit, run a script to get rid of these. So let's do it real quick, just for fun. There's just three line commands here. You still have putty open. We're just going to change directory over to the scripts. run our set policy kit rules script as root and then run the service command to restart Moonraker. Then we'll head back to the browser and it looks like that script did a quick update and took care of all of our errors. So we're good to go there. Again, here's where you would start custom tailoring your printer.config file. Now there is one more thing I wanted to touch on before we end today, and that's with cameras. Both Fluid and Mainsail have pretty good implementations of how you use your webcam. So I'm just going to plug in a webcam I have here, just for an example. We'll point it at the wall over here. And these both use MJPEG Streamer, just like Octoprint does. Now on both mainsail and fluid, your camera is just going to be a widget on your dashboard here, but it might not come up automatically. So in fluid, just go over here back to settings and go to cameras. And when they come up by default, they usually have this little sign on there. There's an error. Just click on it and hit enable. Hit save. Back to the dashboard. There's your camera right here on the main page. Both implementations are very smooth. You can even set up multiple cameras in Mainsail and Fluid. Very easy to use. So there it is, Mainsail and Fluid and how you can use them both to control your 3D printer running Clipper. And as of right now, I've used them both some. I really can't find any features that are better in one or the other. I think it's really a matter of preference at this point. Both of them are being actively developed. I think they're both pretty easy to use. And even if one has a feature the other one doesn't, soon the other one will catch up. It's really not that big a deal. So try them both, they're both free, and they install pretty much exactly the same way. Let me know which one you like best in the comments. So hopefully you found this helpful. We do have a lot more videos to come. The next one will be configuring your 3D printer to use Clipper, no matter what UI you're going to use. 
That's it for today, and I'll see you really soon on the next one.